All right, Mark, thanks for making some time. Um, so first of all, you know, the, you, you're known for many things um, and you're the founder of Canonical. Um, so please just explain um, what the vision and the mission of Canonical is um, and, and how it ties into digital transformation today. Hmm. Open source really is um, profoundly changing the nature of software. Uh, it started, you know, with very specialist things, compilers, uh, and so on. They moved on to operating systems and Linux. But in practice, almost every category of software across every class of compute is being transformed in one way or another by open source. Um, and so the vision behind Canonical was to find the cleanest most cost-effective, sustainable way to deliver open source um, to the individuals and the enterprises that are using it at scale um, all over the world for whatever they might be, whatever they might be building. Um, and so really uh, Canonical and Ubuntu have grown globally with the adoption of open source um, right across uh, industries, right across um, countries. Um, and and our, um, our footprint today really reflects people buying into that same vision that it's all about getting high quality open source um, in a way that you can operate cost effectively um, and in a way that you can believe in for the long term. So, so break it down for me um, in terms of uh, for a dummy. Um, you know, if you if you were looking at um, the the actual underpinnings behind Canonical, um, there's Ubuntu operating system, which is based on Linux. Um, maybe just uh, spell out the whole value stream um, of of Canonical um, and and what are the major key components and why um, why Linux versus something else? Sure. Um, well, I got very lucky when I was in my 20s commercially. Um, you know, I, I was in a small place far, 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 far away from Silicon Valley and I was fascinated with internet commerce. And so I, you know, played a bit of a chess game in my head and made some moves to try to get into e-commerce in a way that didn't require venture capital and didn't require bandwidth both of which were very scarce for a student in Cape Town in the 90s. Uh, and I got very lucky that that worked incredibly well. Um, so I found myself you know, in a very privileged position, um, but with a bit of a kind of question mark over, over my commercial skill, right? Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to do something um, that would be socially impactful uh, because I was in such a privileged position. I, I, you know, I feel like we, those of us who are very fortunate in, in whatever way kind of owe it to the, the planet and other people to, to do something with that good fortune that, that isn't just for ourselves. So I wanted to do something that was socially impactful. I wanted to do something that was global. You know, I had this very unique experience of sort of seeing the world from space and you know, really felt that whatever I did, I wanted to have an impact that, that could be global. Um, and I also wanted to do something that commercially was right at the outer limits of what might be possible, right? Um, just as a, as a challenge. Uh, if, you've, if you've ever ascended in NetHack, then you get this weird temptation to try and ascend again as a vegan atheist, right? You know, tie, tie both hands behind your back and do something very, very difficult, right? Um, so, so Canonical was born of that set of crazy ideas, right? Can I, um, uh, can I do something for open source because that will be a global phenomenon? Can I do something in a way that levels the playing field? You know, a kid in Calcutta, a kid in California deserve the same shot at being the first to implement something interesting or important, right? And, you know, at a time when, when the cost of software was very high, delivering software freely to both of those kids felt like a, a big move that could have a huge social impact. 
And I'm very, you know, I get vicarious pleasure from all of the things that kids in California and Kolkata have built on Ubuntu, right? Um, and then commercially doing something that's intrinsically hard and expensive and operating system, giving that away as a first principle, and then figuring out around the edges how to how to make that sustainable. Commercially, that was going to be a big challenge. So that's that's kind of why I chose this path. Um, and uh, Perhaps if I'd known how difficult the last piece would be, I, I might have chosen something else. But um, but somewhat miraculously, and with the help of a lot of community and customers, we 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 are now sustainable, and Ubuntu has um, has a long, uh, I think, future as the cleanest, leanest platform for for open source compute uh, on the planet.